Week two of the 2022 NFL season is set to begin here tonight for you guys that are watching this on Thursday between the Chiefs and the Chargers. Justin Herbert and the Chargers led revamped team with a new defense, new offense is taking charge against Patrick Mahomes, who didn't seem to struggle without Tyree Kill. We're going to be talking about that game as well as the other games, giving you our weekly picks. Hello, everyone. Welcome to a brand new episode of Time to Football. My name is Hassan Khan, the host of the channel that we like to call Time to Football. You guessed it correctly. Hey, for you guys that are wondering where the heck fantasy football is, if you just watch this video for 45 seconds to a minute, I tell you that we have a new fantasy football channel. Click that link in the description, subscribe to get your fantasy football advice. This one is dedicated just to the NFL for podcasts, for player interviews, and bringing on wonderful guest hosts as well. And what we got for our preview show for week two and preview shows moving forward is Jansen Harris. Jansen, how you doing, my man? I'm doing good, Hassan. Thank you. We were chopping it up before the show. And now we're doing the show. It's like we did the show before the show, man. And We're going to go through each game and give you our picks for each game. Uh, we're also going to include the spread for each game as well, uh, the favorites and uh, who's expected to, to win. Um, so let's start off with the Thursday night football game between the Chiefs and the Chargers. Uh, this is going to be a good battle. This could help determine early on who actually is the best team in the AFC West because I would say right now after the Raiders and the Broncos lost, it's between these two. Uh, who would you say you have in this game and by how many points? I think it's going to be tight, but I, I got the Chiefs by 14 in this one. I like. Wait, hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> hold on. You said tight. Tight at first. Later on, Chiefs uh, by 14. Okay. All right. Chiefs, I like them at home. I believe they sent a message to the league last week. I took that seriously. That game against Arizona, because I think Arizona's a pretty good team. Right. Even though they took that shellacking, I believe the Chiefs are saying, wait a minute. You guys are talking about the Chargers going far. You're talking about the Raiders. We're talking about Denver. You're talking about us potentially being last in the division. They feel like that's disrespectful. Patrick Mahomes, you saw what he did last week. He's like, hey, I'm the best player in the league. I think he has a repeat performance. I, I believe that the Chiefs will come out. They'll be throwing the ball everywhere. And I think the Chargers will do the same thing, too. It'll be a shootout early, but then the fourth quarter. And see, I didn't explain myself too well in the beginning. The fourth quarter, you'll see the, the Chiefs. Spread their wings a little bit. So 35 to 21 tonight. It's a good score. 35 it's a good 20. score. Yeah, they... Check up on me in the fourth quarter. You'll see. 35 21. <laughs> Y'all check up on me too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think the Chiefs are favored to win by four. I'm going to go in the opposite direction. I'm going to go by two. Um, the Chargers are my Super Bowl contenders. Now, it, after seeing the Bills dominate the Rams, my preseason pick were, were the Chargers to go all the way to the Super Bowl. But after seeing the Bills, I'm like, okay, at least they make the AFC Championship. I, I feel like the Chargers will. But I got the Chargers to win by two. I, I think that they are a better team. I know you can't discount Patrick Mahomes. I get it. Totally understand. But I think this Chargers defense is much better than the Cardinals defense. They're going to contain Mahomes just a little bit more. And I, I cannot find a single flaw in any level on the Chargers. Like their offensive line is has some star players. Quarterback we know, running backs we know, wide receivers we know. Uh Keenan Allen missing this game is going to be a, a detriment to that. But um on defense they really improved. So I got the Chargers by two, but we'll see. Uh now the next game going into Sunday, it's Dolphins versus Ravens. Ravens are three and a half point favorites. Who you got? Tua is trying to prove that he isn't as bad as what a lot of the people in the media are saying. So I think this game will be close. 27 to 24 Ravens. I, I, I like the way Lamar Jackson was throwing the ball against the Jets. And of course, it's my Jets. So they're gonna they're gonna do a lot of things like that. They're just gonna break down the secondary breakdowns. Right. But I give Lamar credit. He looked good in week one. He's trying to show people why he deserves big money. And I think he'll do something late in that game to really Put it on ice. I, I believe it'll be 24-24 going into the fourth quarter. And then the Ravens have the ball last. Maybe something breaks down. Maybe the pass rush almost gets there and Lamar just breaks free. A little 15-yard gain. Gets them in field goal range. But it's going to be a close game. I really like how Miami's playing, though. It could go either way. But but give me the Ravens by three. Uh, I like it. I like it. I got the Ravens winning at home as well. But I got them winning by six. Six? Okay. Uh, because I don't know. Okay. The Dolphins are legit. They showed up against the Patriots, but also the Patriots, we expected to be kind of in a decline this year. So 
I mean, they looked better than maybe what they actually are. So, um, but I got the Ravens by six. We'll see. We'll see what happens in, in that game. Um, Jets versus Browns. Browns are six points favorites. Who you got? I got the Browns sixteen to six. The Jets' offense is they having issues right now with Joe Flacco. Flacco's looking how he's supposed to look. It'll probably be close early, but it, you'll never feel like the Jets are going to win the game. So you you might see it seven to three for a while in this game, but there's nothing showing me on paper that this Jets' offense is going to do anything. Now they got a lot of young players on the team. They need to establish the run early. Maybe get Flacco in some confident situations, but they look terrible. They they weren't ready to play. And they're going to need to play. They're going to need to be better than what they are. But I still have the Browns winning. I I, I was impressed by them last week. I thought that was a little bit of a, a a punch to Baker Mayfield. And this Browns team, they got ballers on defense. They'll yeah. they'll get a couple turnovers on the Jets. Maybe a fumble recovery. They might score on defense. Let me say that too. I th- think the Browns will score on defense. I think Brissett is going to be a tad bit better than Joe Flacco, and that might not me- mean much. But in this game, sixteen to six, that's a good score. I like a low scoring. You yeah, know, defense. no defense, defense, old school a little bit. Yeah, yeah, their defense looked great against the Carolina Panthers, except one busted play that allowed Robbie Anderson to, to to get loose. But I think against the Panthers, they limited the Panthers to just 53, 54 offensive snaps, which is like that's not the average. That's very, very below average. And the Jets' offense is not any better than the Panthers. Like the Panthers are, you know, got some star playmakers on there for the Jets. Yeah. You know, it's going to be tough. I got the Browns winning as well. I got the Browns winning by seven uh, in this game. So I do think it's going to be by one position at least, one touchdown at least. So we'll see what the outcome of that is. Colts versus Jaguars, AFC South matchup. Uh, Colts tied it last week against the Texans. Jaguars lost to the Commanders. Can the Colts pick up their first win or whichever team can pick up their first win in this game? Oh, damn. Mm. This, is, this is what I was going back and forth in my head. But – I think it'll be a close game. I got the Colts by a touchdown, 31-24. to 24. I believe Matt Ryan, he struggled in the first half last week. I, I don't think he'll struggle as much. I think Jonathan Taylor run all over the place. I think the Jags will show me something, though, at home. The Jags, I believe, will be in more games. That should be like, wow, the Jags are in this game. The, the Jags will show some improvements. Yeah. But I, I don't see them winning this game. I, I say 31-24. I think Trevor Lawrence is going to be times where he makes some plays like, wow, he's taking the next step. Yeah, I got the Colts winning by a touchdown as well. Close by seven. I, I think they're going to rebound because they could have beaten the Texans if, you know, Roger Good Blankenship hit that game winner. But it's the I, kickers, man. Yeah, the Kickers, man. boy. They'll lose you some money too, right? It's, they, they will. <laughs> they will, man. Don't underestimate them. Uh, but I got the Colts by seven in this game. Saints versus Buccaneers. Jameis Winston. Uh, I think he's already had a revenge game earlier against the Bucks. <laughs> so I don't know if he's still feeling it. But uh, the man with so many great quotes, can he do it against his former team? Yep. And he's probably going to say something like, we came out there and, and, and we had this. I don't know, man. He, he got something new every week. Maybe we had the swag. We showed our swag and we won the game. Yeah, they go, they're going to win that game. I think the Bucks are pretty banged up. I think the Saints, I, I just love their the, the dome. I, I love that super dome. I believe this, the Saints will come out there. They'll feed off that crowd. They'll make some plays on defense. They didn't play too well against the Falcons. But late in that game, I believe they saw something. And Michael Thomas is gaining confidence. And I believe Michael Thomas, he might be the best receiver on that field with all these injuries going down. And he wants to prove that he's still a, a top-level player in this league. So I believe Michael Thomas have a pretty good game. I think it's a lot to overcome for the Bucks. But it is a division game. But I, I got the I got the Saints winning twenty eight to seventeen. Oh I believe God. Fournette will have a pretty good game. But something is just telling me that pass rush of the Saints are going to be dialed up. Tom Brady has never beaten the Saints as a member of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, um, and I don't think it's going to happen this week either. I wanted to say the Buccaneers prior to all the receivers getting onto the injury report, and to be honest with you, from the sounds of it. It only seems like, best case scenario, it's going to be Chris Godwin that misses this game, so everybody else is going to be available. But the fact that Brady's never beaten the Bucks, Dennis Allen is the one that has caused so much havoc to Brady. The reason why he hasn't beaten the Bucks is because he can't get past the defense. He performs poorly. Dennis Allen, defensive coordinator for the Saints for the past couple of years. Now he's the head coach. He's going to get it done. I feel like this is going to be the Saints team 
uh, to win. I don't think it's going to be high scoring, to be honest with you. I don't think, um, like Michael Thomas might make some, you know, good plays, but I think it's really going to be about the defense because the Bucks defense, like, you know, they looked great against the Cowboys. So, um, I think this is the the week though that Brady loses. They start one and one. I got the Saints to win by six. Yeah, and Jameis has people already. Jameis is, is starting to get a little bit more of a fan base. People think, well, maybe Jameis isn't that bad. And I'm still like, oh, Jameis gonna do something at the end of the year to yeah. to, to to break things down there. But we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, James, we'll, see. we'll see how how Jameis does this year. I it's, think a lot of the NFL community is rooting for uh, Jameis Winston just because of, uh, gosh, how freaking hilarious he is. Yeah, him in these interviews, man. He look. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like I like his energy. I like his energy. Though I'll say that. Pain everywhere. Pain everywhere. Uh, <laughs> Panthers versus Giants. Giants with that upset victory against the Tennessee Titans. Panthers are two and a half point favorites in this game. Who you got? Man, I, I'll tell you what. This was one. This is one of the games. I'm interested to watch. I know this is one of those ticket games that people, eh, who cares about? But I believe the Giants are, are going to win this game. I believe the Giants are going to win wow. this game. It's going to be an upset. Saquon Barkley tour continues. Saquon's going to have over 100 yards, and he's going he's gonna to do damage in the passing game as well, too. I believe the Giants, they showed me something a little bit last week. I'm not saying this is a playoff team, but they bring that momentum in. I think they'll rush the quarterback. They'll get a turnover or two. I, I don't believe in Baker Mayfield like that. I think he'll have some moments in this game. But 17-10 to 10 to me, I see the Giants winning this one 2-0 and start. That's crazy because you got the Giants winning. I got the Panthers winning, but I got the Panthers winning by 10 points. So I got the opposite where, hey, why is the point spread 2.5 points for the Panthers when <coughs> I think the Panthers could really dominate in this game? Um, just because I know Saquon Barkley has been looking great. And the Panthers' defense last week against Nick Chubb gave up, I think he ran for 141 yards. I get it. I totally understand. But even with Saquon Barkley doing Saquon Barkley things, rushing for 164 yards, they only put up, what was it, 21 points in that game. So I think the Panthers' offense is going to be better this week. Against the Browns, they only put up 24 points. But I think they can do much better against the Giants. I think they get Christian McCaffrey more involved. I think they get DJ Moore more involved because looking back last week, they were like, man, we lost because we didn't get all these star players involved. we got to change that up. Now, I think this is the week that they do it. So I got the Panthers winning by 10. Okay. And here's the thing, Dable, too, uh, before we move on to the next, let's see what he could do with Daniel Jones. Let, let's see. I, I'm ready to see. Because there's times I watched Daniel Jones last year. To his defense, even though I bash him a lot, to his defense, he looks good at moments. You watch, okay, Daniel Jones do it. And then there's times where, okay, here's the pick. Here, here's He didn't fumble as much last year. But th there was times where it's like, okay, why are you throwing the ball there? Yeah. We'll see if he could correct some of that. And if he can... And what's happening with the Cowboys? Maybe, may, maybe this team could compete for the division title. <laughs> Ooh! Well, you win your division. But, hey, win. whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> one week at a time. One week at a time. Let's let's take it easy there. Uh, the New England Patriots are one and a half point favorites over the Pittsburgh Steelers. Steelers having that three point upset victory in overtime against the Cincinnati Bengals. The Patriots losing to the Dolphins. Who you got in this game? You said the Patriots are one point favorite. One and a half point favorites, yeah. One and a half. This is gonna be a tight game. This gonna this gonna be a, a a tight old school type of game. I like Pittsburgh in this one by a field goal, sixteen to thirteen. I think New England continues to have separation issues with their wide receiving core. I believe Pittsburgh would be a little bit more physical, run the ball a little bit better, and I believe Pittsburgh wins this game and they'll start two and zero. And New England will be zero and two. It's not really. It's it's wild to think that the the Patriots are declining just from everything they're able to do. But I believe in Pittsburgh. I believe they'll run the football, and they'll be ready for Mac Jones. Mac, but for Mac Jones' defense, if they are to win this game, even though I'm not picking them, I don't believe in them this week, Mac Jones is going to have to make some plays out the pocket with his legs. He's going to have to make those sneaky plays, a third and 11. They're dropping back. He's going to have to tuck it and run. Do, do something because this offense is stale right now. Clearly they're stale. And they, they need to mix things up. They need to make mix things up. He might have to do it with his legs because it, the wide receiving core is so weak. They need to make a trade ASAP. So a, a, any hot receiver out there they think of, just they, they, need to, they, get, they need to do it. But Belichick probably doesn't want to panic. Odell Beckham Jr. I would. I, I would if I'm them, but yeah. we'll see. Well, yeah, the Patriots' uh, offense did not look that great. They just lost Ty Montgomery as well. So Ramondre Stevenson is going to have to step up. As a pass catching back, I got the Patriots, however, winning this game by three. So 
I do still believe in Mac Jones and the offense. Like the offseason reports were saying that he's getting more comfortable throwing the ball down the field. I do feel that he is going to get over 4,000 yards passing, maybe even close to 4,500 yards. We'll see. But um, I think last week it was more so about the Dolphins' defense being legit rather than uh, the Patriots being, you know, kind of bad on offense. I still don't think they're going to do much in this game offensively, but I still got the Patriots winning because, I mean, for the Pittsburgh Steelers, they didn't look that good offensively either. So okay. I got the Patriots and he's winning. this game. Text me during the game, man. Well, I got we'll see, you. So especially that that what, what was that game we really disagreed on? Panthers and Giants. Yeah. Y'all, 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 y'all hit us up th- during that game. That's gonna be one of those sneaky games we forget about because right. there's other things going on. But we gotta keep an eye on that one. Yeah. So hit me up about that one. No, I definitely will. I mean, yeah, we disagreed on those, but maybe we can agree on this next one. We got the Commanders versus the Lions. Now you had the Lions last week being like your upset victory yep. against the Philadelphia Eagles. Is that happening? The Lions are two-and-a-half-point favorites in yes, this game. Yes, Lions, Lions last week, I, I thought you'll do it for me. You're going to do it this week. I think the Lions showed a lot on offense, and they're going to bring that same momentum in this week. Now, their defense, their, their defense, uh, they, they, they allowed a lot. Jalen Hurts dominated them. A, A.J. Brown dominated them in the first half. He, he started out yeah. dominating them. He just, from the start. But – I believe this commander's offense is if he even though even though Wentz did throw four touchdowns last week, I don't think he does that again. I believe it'll be let's go 28-21. 28-21. I think Wentz throws a pick late. Those a pick late, and then yeah, they lose the game off that. But I believe at at home, I like the Lions. Three in a row, we disagree on. <laughs> I'm going to have to go commanders on this one, man. You think Wentz is going to dominate, though? I, I, I think he is. I, okay, so maybe not dominate. I think it's going to be more so like Antonio Gibson, like a good combination of Gibson and Wentz. Okay. But this is the best trio of weapons that Carson Wentz has played with his entire career. Like the best receiver that he's ever played with, besides Michael Pittman. I mean, that was his – yeah, that was last year in, in Indianapolis. But the best receiver was Zach Ertz. Outside of that, it was like a sprinkle of Dallas Goddard here and there, Alshon Jeffrey, but like now he's got Scary Terry, <laughs> Jahan Dotson, Curtis Samuel showed up last week. I really like this commander's offense. I really do. I think Ron Rivera is getting in a, into a groove, uh, and Carson Wentz is the best commander's quarterback since Kirk Cousins. Um, so I got the commanders winning by two okay. just because of uh, they've been looking good, and the Lions defense is – ugh. Not so good. Uh, but the Seahawks versus 49ers. The 49ers are 10-point favorites. Can you believe that? Again, they're doubting <laughs> They're doubting Geno Smith, who had this tremendous game against the Denver Broncos. Do you have the 49ers winning by 10? Not 10. Not 10. I believe this will be another one of those games, old-school football, run-the-football type of games. I say, let's say 16 to 13, 16, 13, 49ers. But the 49ers are t- 10 points better than Seahawks. Not right now. No. I don't think so. But uh, I don't believe in Geno at all. They think he's going to go mess that game up. No, you you did a three-point difference in this game. I have three points, 49ers by three points. So we agree on that. Um, I do think it's going to be low scoring as well. I think uh, Trey Lance is still trying to get into the groove of things. Um, and losing Elijah Mitchell doesn't help either. But it's going to be a very run heavy with a rushing quarterback with Debo Samuel, um, and I think the Seahawks defense has little to to no chance of really stopping a, a rushing attack led by the 49ers, even if they lost Elijah Mitchell. But I got the 49ers winning by three in this game. Uh, the Atlanta Falcons versus the Los Angeles Rams. The Rams are ten and a half point favorites. Who you got? Well, that's not enough. That that's going to be a beating. I'm telling you, that 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 game right there. I hate it, Falcon fans. I'll probably just point out the keys to them maybe keeping the game close. Not on this show, though. This show, the Rams, they're going to take their frustration out on the Falcons. I would say probably 35-10, man. I think it's going to be a blowout. I think the Rams are going to come out. They're going to look completely different. Are there going to be issues with the Rams later in the season when it comes to Matthew Stafford and turnovers? Against the high-level teams, yeah. But this Falcons team, they should beat them up. This is one of those rebound games. This is if, I don't know how familiar you guys are with boxing at home, but you just had a big fight, you need a warm-up fight, get your confidence up. That's what this is. The Rams should go in there, beat them down, take care of business, and then move on from that 
loss to the Bills. So I believe this is one of those games. And there's, a, there's one more game. When we get to it, it's coming up. That's going to be another one of those games, too, in my opinion. Yeah, the Rams, I, I do agree that they are going to win. I have the Rams <laughs> winning by 13 in this game. Um, now, I could be – it could be another situation where the Falcons are up. <laughs> and then the Rams win by like three. In that case, you don't meet the spread. But I got the Rams winning by 13. Conventional wisdom should say that the Rams should win by uh, at least two possessions uh, is my thought process. Texans versus Broncos. Broncos 10-point favorites after losing to the Seattle Seahawks in an upset. The Houston Texans tying it against the I, I like what I saw out of so, – sorry about that. I like yeah. what I saw out of Mills, man. He really excited me last week. However, I don't think he repeats that performance. I think the Texans go back to being the Texans. Just like the last game I picked, this is a beat down too because the Broncos were really disappointing. And you, you can't afford to lose too many of these games. I'm already looking at this AFC West picture as you are too. This is a very serious division where every loss counts. So you lost to the Seattle Seahawks, which – I. I'm looking at that team like they're not a playoff team. You can't afford to lose to the Texans. I'm expecting a beating. Hatchet, Nathaniel Hatchet, I, I don't know what happened week one. That was terrible time management. I mean, I, I could have done better than that. However, yeah. I think they rebound in this game. It's going to be another blowout. Give me 28 to 10. Should be easy. Maybe four touchdown passes from Russell Wilson. They start really boosting him up again. I believe this is another one of those games. Like the last one we talked about where this is their rebound week. They can't afford to lose this game. You lose to the Texans, you're already you're already 0-2. So ha they haven't gotten to AFC West play. So they, they need to win this game. Absolutely, they need to win. I got the Broncos winning by 16. Um, not doubting uh, Davis Mills and his talent. GAC quarterback, actually, mm -hmm. 20 minutes down the road. Uh, but, you know, I do agree that the Broncos, they could have won that game. They, there was plenty of opportunity. If Melvin Gordon didn't fumble, if Javante Williams didn't fumble, if on fourth and five they give it to Russell Wilson just, just to go for it, you have a better chance than a 64-yard field goal. Yeah, that was weird. Um, but, you know, uh, I, I think they learn from their mistakes, and I think that they go out there and they dominate. So I got the Broncos winning by 16. Cardinals versus Raiders. We got NFC West versus AFC West. The Raiders are six-point favorites after – the Chiefs just annihilated the, the Cardinals. Who you got in this game? This is one of the most interesting games of the week here. You got one team from the AFC, one from the NFC, like you mentioned. I can't wait for this game. This is one of my favorite games this week. I think it comes Same down here. to the fourth quarter. It's going to be a battle because Arizona doesn't want to fall 0-2. Raiders, they can't afford to lose this game either. Mm, man, it's, it's coming to like right now. Ah. Uh, this is a 50-50 game. I, I really want to say a tie, but nobody wants to hear that, right? You got five seconds. <laughs> I, I got the Raiders, man. I got right. the Raiders winning this game. It's going to be close. Let's mm, – 20, 24 to 21. Last second field goal, Raiders. Believing in Daniel Carlson to kick that game winner, I got the Raiders winning by three as well. And I think it's going to be very close. I think uh, Cardinals losing at home was huge. Like – they did not look great, and we want to think that they're a good team. This is really going to be the test, like, hey, are they actually as good as they were last year, or are they starting to de decline? We know that the Raiders have gotten better with Devontae Adams, so I'm going to go I'm going to go with what I know, and that is the Raiders, but I still think it's going to be close, uh, and they win by three. Bengals versus Cowboys. Now, we wrote down Cowboys 7.5-point favorites. Now, this was before Dak Prescott's injury, so it might have changed, so watch out for that. But right now, the Cowboys are seven-and-a-half-point favorites. That might change. Who you got in this game? Well, you, even before the Dak injury, I was probably going to pick the, the Bengals in this one. I believe the Bengals, they they, they come out. They, they take care of business. Let's say 28 to twenty-eight to 9. It's going to be a weird score, Ooh. 9. I, I, don't, I don't see the Cowboys' offense. And again, somebody's going to have to step up, but I don't see them doing much. And I don't think the defense necessarily is going to be terrible. I think the defense is going to keep them in that game, but how, how much can you do it? It's hard in this league to win when you don't have quarterback play, and they, they're probably not going to get quarterback play. Please pray for them to have a running game. The, the running game is going to have to carry them. Hopefully they can get a pass rush, but I, I just don't see it in this game. I believe the Bengals, they, they take care of business. Taking care of business, 28-9, man. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I'm going to give the Cowboys at least 20 points. 
17 to 20 points. You think so? Like, I, I don't think Cooper Rush last year played. Again, we go back to what we talked about earlier. That was with Amari Cooper. Things are different now. But I still think that they're going to get, you know, I'm going to give them minimum 17 points in this game. Um, but I still got the Bengals winning by 10. <laughs> uh, yeah, they're going to rebound from last week. It, it was just, I mean, Joe Burrow looked, if you want to just talk in, in terms of yards and touchdowns, like he was still finding his open guys. You know what he said, actually? He said, uh, Jamar Chase, even though he had 10 receptions last week, had a touchdown, they still didn't feed him the ball enough. They want to feed him the ball more. So They're going to have a lot of opportunities this weekend. And yep. not a lot of resistance from the quarterback. On the side. I'm sorry, man. I'm hating so much. We'll see. We'll see <laughs> we'll if he see, proves we'll me wrong. T. Higgins is out for this game, or maybe. We don't know yet, but he's going through concussion protocol. He might be out. Uh, Bears versus Packers. Oh, this is make or break for the Packers in this game. Uh, there's a history of Aaron Rodgers. I still own you against the Bears. Is that going to happen this weekend? This is going to be a close game. 20-17 to 17 Packers. I okay. just have to win this one. I think Aaron Rodgers makes a couple plays with his legs in this one. That 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 puts them over the top. But it's gonna be close. They might even be trailing seventeen to thirteen until the last two minutes of the game. Yeah. Uh I actually have the Packers winning, but I actually have them dominating. Packers winning by seventeen. Last week's wow. victory for the Bears <coughs> against the 49ers. Um, it I think it was a product of the weather, to be honest with you. I think they wouldn't have won if it was in, you know, sunny California. But for the Packers and the history that Aaron Rodgers has against the Chicago Bears and still getting it done, still being successful without a history of adding weapons for uh, Aaron Rodgers and some help, even though they don't have Devontae Adams, somehow they're going to get it done. And I think it's going to be a big Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon kind of game uh, where A.J. Dillon could be the ground and pound, could get, gosh, close to 100 yards rushing in this game. And Aaron, Aaron Jones, I wouldn't be surprised if we get somewhere between 8 to 10 receptions in this game. So I got the Packers winning by 17. Uh, the Tennessee Titans versus the Buffalo Bills. This is kind of weird because the Bears-Packers were Sunday night. We got two Monday night games now for some reason. Yeah, which, I, I gonna... which I hate, by the way, because I watch primetime games on YouTube TV, and I can only watch one of them. So I have to go to reddit or whatever to find an illegal stream <laughs> first row sports get whatever virus on my computer to try to find this vikings eagles game that's probably not going to be broadcasted but whatever or maybe it's titans bills i don't know anyways yeah what's up with that yeah, you're uh, right. I, I don't know why did they just put it on sunday i really really don't know like it does anyone know like really genuinely know i haven't looked this up but uh titans versus bills bills are 10 point favorites who you got yeah, Bills. The the Bills, their focus is how are we going to get to the championship and win it? Josh Allen's focus is on winning. It's on winning a championship. This Bills offense is in sync. They, they have confidence now. It's all about the confidence. And right now, this team feels like they're unbeatable. This is going to be a beatdown. Another game where you're like, wow, Josh Allen just did that. They're going to make plays consistently. I, I'm still talking about last week, but it is what it is. When you go out there and you beat the defending champions – Sometimes you feel like the champions. You feel like, we're those guys right now. So their confidence alone, just, just off of that, I knew, I know they're going to win this game. I'm in love with the Bills right now, even though I'm a Jets fan. It's crazy, right? But the Bills, that's still technically New York. They're going to win by a lot, 35-17. Uh, yeah, I have the Bills winning by a big margin as well, not as much as you. Actually, no, I don't. No, the Bills are 10-point favorites. I have the Bills winning by four. Four? I think it's going to be close. I think the Titans... Could have won that game if Randy Bullock didn't blow it. Even though it was pretty close against the New York Giants, I still believe in the Titans being a very good team. Are they going to be the number one seed in the AFC? Probably not, like they were last season. But I still think that's going to be close. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, it was the Titans that beat the Bills on Monday Night Football, or was it like Wednesday Night Football or something? like it Was, was that the stiff arm game? The game where the... Oh, uh, yeah. The Josh <laughs> Norman. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oof. Man, he can never escape that. That's great. Um, you know what's funny is uh, when you just talk a lot of crap, you just get remembered for like your mishaps, you know, because it's like, oh, yeah, take that. Josh Norman will always be remembered about that, but nobody remembers the guy that Vance McDonald of the Steelers stiffed armed against the Buccaneers that one time. I don't know if you remember that play, but uh, anyways, yeah, I got the Bills winning by four. 
Uh, the last game, we've got the Vikings versus Eagles. New look Minnesota Vikings out with a bang against the Green Bay Packers. Justin Jefferson looked great. But so did Jalen Hurts and his new wide receiver, A.J. Brown. Another yeah. interesting game right here, Hassan. And this is, a, this is a great way, I guess, technically to end the day because it's a little bit later than the other Monday night game. So a, a great way to end week two. I'm excited about Minnesota. Minnesota has me excited right now. I got Minnesota again by six. I believe Minnesota will win. I said six points. I'm just trying to come up with, with, with a score. Let's say 34 to 28, 34, 28. I believe Minnesota upsets the Eagles. The Eagles will play well, though. They'll play well. I think Jalen Hurts is is getting to the next level or, or, or appearing to. I believe with the changes they made and A.J. Brown, they're getting a great connection. But I think Minnesota will steal this one on the road. I know Kirk Cousins isn't the best quarterback when it comes to primetime games, but I think he tries to change that narrative a little bit. Monday night, him and Justin Jefferson, that connection is getting special. They're starting to really click together, and I believe they win that game. 2-0 and start for them. Yeah, uh, I, I like the Vikings as well in this game. I think they are huge threats to the Green Bay Packers for the NFC North title. Uh, and so are the Eagles for the NFC East title. But Minnesota, man, like it, it was just designed for Justin Jefferson to succeed in this offense. And they are doing exactly what everybody expected to happen, where Justin Jefferson is the next Cooper Cup in Kevin O'Connell's system. So um, I like the Vikings in this one. I love the Eagles overall, but I'm going to have to go with the Minnesota Vikings in this in this game. And I have the Vikings winning by three. To wrap up this episode, uh, what I ask you to do is just come up with one surprise player for this week, like someone that nobody's really thinking about that could come onto the scene and surprise a lot of people. Who you got? I think Daniel Jones, man. Oh, I like it. Da- Daniel Jones, at least for week two, is 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 going to be – he's going to play competent football. He's going to show you guys – throw the ball down the field, and show you guys, okay, I just needed better coaching. I'm not saying this will go the whole year, guys. I'm not saying it. But for week two and this first quarter of the year, you're going to see some pretty good football from Daniel Jones. I don't know if that's – is that really a surprise? It, I don't – maybe that's 50-50. Because there's people in New York, maybe they're a little delusional. They're thinking, oh, man, Daniel Jones isn't that bad. But the rest of the country pretty much thinks he sucks, right, or might right. get replaced by Tyrod Taylor. But in my opinion – I think the first quarter of the year, Daniel Jones will be an improved quarterback. I like it. That's a, definitely a, a huge surprise. Uh, I'm going to go with a guy that a lot of people don't know about but could make an impact this weekend. His name is Jordan Mason. He's a running back on the San Francisco 49ers. Jordan Mason is stouted or, or touted to be the number two back behind Jeff Wilson this week for the San Francisco 49ers. Jeff Wilson last week and times last year did not look great as a lead back. Mason was uh, beating people out in training camp to be the RB3 on that roster uh, to the point where Tyrion Davis Price, the guy that they drafted in the third round, who they expected to be the backup for Elijah Mitchell, he beat out Tyrion Davis Price for that starting gig or for that number three role, I should say, to the point where Davis Price was a healthy scratch this past week, and Mason was the RB3. So I've got Mason. They're, they're competing in camp right now or in practice right now to see who's going to be the number two back uh, behind Jeff Wilson, and I feel like it's going to be Mason, uh, who is good at Georgia Tech. He lost his job in college to uh, to Gibbs, I feel like, the, the running back in Alabama, but it's an Alabama running back. In the preseason, uh, Jordan Mason had 19 carries for 96 yards, this is a Kyle Shanahan kind of guy. Like Elijah Mitchell looked good last year, and nobody expected that. It's like, oh, where did this guy come from? It was a Kyle Shanahan kind of guy, and I wouldn't be surprised if Shanahan goes in that direction of, hey, Jordan Mason, whoever has a hot hand, Mason in practice and camp has been having the hot hand. He's going to run away with the job. And against Seattle, where the run defense didn't look good last week, I think it's going to be Jordan Mason. Okay. Surprise us. Okay. Uh, but that's going to do it for this episode of Time to Football. Listen, guys, if you are new to this channel, I encourage you guys to hit that subscribe button so you guys can stay up to date for all the recap shows and the preview shows that we come out with every week. Recap shows come out on Mondays. Preview shows are coming out on Thursdays. Chiefs Chargers tonight. Enjoy the game. Who you guys got? Let us know in the comments down below. Uh, Jansen, any last words? 
Absolutely. I had fun. I'm going to be here all season long unless I get dropped randomly for a random text. Yes, we're dropping. Just kidding. Just kidding. Don't throw jokes out there. But yeah, I had a lot of fun, man. I can't wait, man. I, I, I had a lot of fun. Everybody at home, enjoy these football games. Football season's in full swing. There's going to be some upsets now. You guys hit me up, too. And go follow the Just Good. Now, I'm not a plug, right? Go for it. Go follow the Just Good Network, guys. And look, if you want to join the Just Good Network, justgoodnetwork.com. Let's broadcast together. Hassan, man, I had so much fun. I'm thankful to be here. I love the seat. Love the mic. And I can't wait to do it next week. Yeah, for sure. This is actually very, very comfy. Absolutely. Um but yeah go follow his stuff i'll put the links to all that in the description down below with all that said thank you guys so much for watching this episode and we'll see you monday take care enjoy the games this weekend